All right, everyone, while we're on the subject of mewing today, I want to do one more video on my thoughts about mewing with MSE. Specifically, I want to say the following. Everyone talks about face mask in MSE. You know, they say, well, MSE disrupts these sutures, it loosens things up, it turns things into jello, and then the face mask is used and it pulls everything forward while all those sutures are nice and loose. Well, what about mewing with MSE, right? If those structures are loose, then it seems to me that this is probably a good time to have a pretty solid mewing practice going too, because the face mask is pulling you this way, while mewing is pushing you that way. So I think the reason this doesn't get talked about is because Dr. Juan Moon, who does all the papers on face mask and MSE, probably doesn't know much about mewing, right? He's probably, you know, doesn't follow Dr. Mew on YouTube or, you know, watch Astro Sky or Tommaso or, you know, anyone else who talks about mewing. So he probably assumes his patients aren't going to be, you know, practicing this hardcore method of pressing the tongue onto the roof of the mouth. But what if you are? You know, what if a patient is doing that? I would hypothesize that the most bang for your buck that you can get out of mewing is probably with MSC when those sutures are wide open, AKA the situation that I have right now. Now, thankfully, right as my sutures are loose because my MSC is, I have my, my suture is split. For anyone who doesn't know my status, visit my blog, link in the description below. I'm currently about six weeks into MSE. My suture is split. I've got about six millimeters of uh, suture split with the MSE, and other sutures are starting to be disrupted, according to my orthodontist, Dr. Nuaz, who just did a CBCT last week and, and saw evidence that that was the case. Simultaneously, I am just starting to really get into this new suction based method of mewing that I'm. Uh, discovering, which has taken my mewing game to a whole new level. And you can watch some prior videos that I did just before this one about the difference between the pressing or forcing based mewing and then suction or vacuum based mewing, which is a whole order of magnitude uh, more effortless and sustainable in my opinion. Basically, you create an intraoral vacuum by gathering spit and swallowing it while maintaining a lip seal and that intraoral vacuum holds your tongue up onto the roof of your mouth. So I've been doing vacuum based mewing a lot with MSE and I'm, I'm feeling like, um, you know, it's obviously I, I'm seeing a lot of changes because I'm wearing MSE. So I can't say that it's the mewing that's responsible for the changes that I'm seeing. Of course, it's primarily the MSE that's responsible, but my logic is, is the following, and I've basically already said as much in this video. If face mask plus MSE is a good combination, then mewing plus MSE should also be a good combination because while the face mask pulls, the mewing pushes. And so I will certainly be keeping that in mind and thinking to myself that this next few months while my sutures are open, this is probably prime time for me to be kicking my mewing practice into high gear so that I can really get as much structural change as possible while those sutures are jello. So just thought I'd share that thought with you. It's definitely speculation. I have no evidence to think that this may be true, but uh, it's food for thought. All right, peace out.